We continue our coverage today once again with a panel of legal experts. We have Sanford Shulman, a defense attorney with extensive experience in Miller hearings specifically, as well as former Third Circuit Judge Vonda Evans. Thank you both for being with us again Thank today. Thank you for asking us. So as Andres just mentioned, we thought this might wrap up today or no. even before today, but here we are, we're pushing into a fourth day here and we saw just one witness on the stand today, a uh, psychologist, Dr. King, whom you are familiar with, uh, mm -hmm. Sanford what would you make of this day? Well, I, we anticipated the defense calling an expert, and I was pleasantly surprised it was Dr. King. I knew him before he testified in any Miller hearings, and the first time I met him, I, he was professional, he was, he was passionate, he was very thorough, and he testified in, in our Miller hearings that I've handled. So I knew that when I saw his testimony, it was going to be very effective. And today was the opportunity to bring to life, so to speak, to bring out the characteristics of the defendant, to show his, his human humanity, his, his trials, his tribulations, and I think Dr. King did it very well and very effectively. But the best of this hearing is yet to come. And what might that be? Well, the rebuttal witness of the prosecutor. The prosecutor could have called that rebuttal witness in their case in chief, but they're holding out to evaluate Dr. King's testimony and incorporate it in their testimony. And I believe not only is the most critical part of this hearing the rebuttal witness, but the cross-examination of that rebuttal witness. Because we're down to the real issue is, is this defendant able to be rehabilitated? And that's the question. And those experts are debating it. So all the emotions set aside, that is the ultimate question. And these experts are going to debate it and have different opinions. And the defense ability to cross-examine effectively that rebuttal witness, I believe, will be the tipping point of this hearing. So stay tuned for that kind of cross-examination. We've seen a number of expert witnesses, none on the stand for as long as Dr. King today. Judge Evans, what do you make of the strategy and, and how contentious it got today? Well, let me say this to you. Therapists, doctors are like lawyers. You got a glass. Once it was half empty, you know it's half full. It's the same amount of water, but it's just a conclusion. Mm -hmm. That's where we are. There are going to be other tests. Well, you didn't give this factor this much weight. You should have done that. So basically, what it's going to come down to is what the judge thinks. And the criterion, as we said, is that life without a, par a par uh, parole in Michigan is a, for, for a juvenile, is not a good sentence. However, there's a rebuttable presumption that says, if you can convince me by clear and convincing evidence that I should do it, I will. But going in this hearing, there is a presumption that you should not sentence juveniles to life without a parole because of the Miller factors and the Miller holding. After everything we've heard today, as a former judge, do you believe we have a clearer picture of where this is going to go? You haven't heard the best yet. And what that's going to be is listening to this uh, rebuttal witness, as Sanford has indicated, and the judge has to evaluate everything. This is a hard call for him. It's just not simply two plus two is four. There's a lot of variables because you're talking about a person's life and you're also talking about emotional factors. So how challenging, and how challenging is that for the judge to to stay in the moment and look, this is not going to pick up for another two and a half weeks for him to stay in that moment and not lean one way or another yet. Well, what he's going to do and what I would do and any other judge would do, I'm going to order every transcript. I'm going to go through every word. I'm going to line it up. And then I'm going to be able to look at everything. When you are a judge, it's like being a referee on the field. You got to make calls. But if you get the opportunity to have video, you're going to make a better call. If I get an opportunity to have transcripts and I can see what's going on, I'm on it now. Because it may be something that I missed when the testimony was going on or somehow I got distracted. OK, so he's going to do that and that's going to give him a better opportunity. And guess who else is going to order that transcript? The prosecution. Mm -hmm. Sanford, today, one of the most compelling, uh, difficult parts to watch and listen to was some video of an episode that the shooter had while in custody. What do you think was the strategy there when it comes to proving these Miller factors? Well, the defense has an extremely difficult challenge to try to offset the Miller factor that is the n nature and circumstances of the case. And to do that, how they have to, in, to expose, to illuminate some of the emotional parts of the defendant himself. What is he going through? And I know from the victim's perspective, the families of the victims and their families and the people who sort of sympathize with them, it's difficult to, 
to try to say, I feel bad for the defendant. He's going through all these emotional problems. But the judge has to consider that. The Supreme Court says, can we look at all these factors to decide, can he be rehabilitated? And that's the ultimate question. We don't have a prognostic. We can't look into the future and know tomorrow, next week, next year, in the decades to come, is he going to be, to be able to be rehabilitated? So that type of testimony and evidence, I think, is really telling as to his state of mind, his character, and whether we can actually predict his future. You the talked about the factors. We got nine factors. Three of those factors, his family, possibility of rehabilitation, and his age. Right now, they're in his favor. Mm -hmm. And so what we have to do is, you have to remember, going into this, there is a presumption against it. The prosecution has the burden to overcome it. Clearly, I give an example to all people. What's the difference between first degree premeditated murder and negligent homicide to the victim? There is none. Mm -hmm. They're gone. So the family, there's no bringing their children back, their loved ones, their friends. It's hard. As hard as this is, when you see a Miller hearing with all the experience that you have with these, when you see the prosecution grilling Dr. King there, um, it almost felt like they were trying to discredit him and his findings, saying that the shooter is mentally ill and he had all these issues that were not addressed. How uncomfortable was that? And do you feel like there is a valid point on the other side as they're trying to push for life in prison without parole? Well, the defense should be sitting there saying, we are going to get our turn, our chance to cross-examine their rebuttal witness. And it's the battle of the witnesses, the battle of the experts. And that is really the most interesting from a clinician point of view, from a lawyer standpoint point of view. This is real. This is fake TV. This is fake trial. This is real. These are real lives. These are real people. And when you come down to the cross-examination of the government's expert on whether he can be rehabilitated, that is going to shine whether they can bring out all the points that they want to as they sit there watching their expert be grilled. They're going to have an opportunity to grill the prosecutor's witness. And I have my own thoughts on that, but that's going to be the most interesting part of this case. Well, we will be watching every moment of that. Defense attorney Sanford Shulman and retired Third Circuit Judge Vonda Evans, thank you both so much for your time today. Thank you.